everybody. Walk down the studio. I feel like I just saw everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple months, huh? <laughs> yeah. Does that mean weeks. we're too much? When someone says, I feel like I just saw you, you should be like, I haven't it's seen you forever. It's a good thing. I need to see more of you guys. You good? I'm so good. Would oh you... my God. It's like it's happening. I know, right? Yeah, this is like the first time I've really talked about it. So I'm going to play a little bit of the song, girl. You can, If you want to hear it, your headphones yeah. right there. It's like a new person exists now. Your second record, this is like now you. Yeah, new baby. How exciting is that to hear that the world gets to hear it? Um, it's like really amazing. I, I I feel like I did a lot of soul diving to get this song written. And um, I've heard it a, a thousand million times in the last year, but to have it being played like for everyone now is just such a, such a release. Um, and I'm really proud of it. I felt like it, it's what I needed to say to myself when I wrote the song. And then it feels really timely just to put it out now because it's just, it, it's medicinal. I, I feel like it has a good um, message behind it. And it's, um, it's just, yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a therapeutic song. That's the intention behind it. Tell me what you're saying in this song. Well, um, the whole song started out as me addressing another woman and like, why are we competing against each other? This is so stupid. And then I realized like, I don't think I'm talking to anyone else but myself right now. I'm talking to me. And it was sort of a, a come to Jesus moment for myself. Like, why, are, why am I competitive? Why am I like so critical of myself? It's just, you know, human things that we deal with. It's just so annoying, but we have to tackle them. And I realized like, the whole chorus where it's like everyone's gonna be okay um i was telling that to myself and um yeah that's how it kind of fell out do you have anywhere you listen to these songs when they're done so you can go yeah this is it like give a special place or a special speaker that you hear it <laughs> no i listen in my kitchen that's like honestly like around a, an island just listen i listen with my husband um my friends and just kind of litmus test the the production but honestly like all the final mixes of this album i was listening to in that car yeah. <laughs> ryan your husband was saying that that you you would go in the car yeah because you love the sound system and you could hear like all the instruments and that's where it felt the best yeah i would like take a cup of coffee and i'd be like all right babe i'll be back in like 45 minutes and i would just go out to the car and i'd have like neighbors walking by uh, you know <laughs> uh, wondering if i'm okay in there but i'm just like sitting in the on our street uh listening to every song top to bottom and that's honestly like the final time i approved all the the mixes is sitting in the driver's seat listening so you have uh, five grammy nominations huh Mm -hmm. that's crazy it not, is. not that it's you doing it but just that it's a real thing because it's always on tv people do crazy things on tv our whole life growing up yeah um it, it was like amazing to get those nominations especially for a year where i you know it's sort of a an off cycle for my album um i'm ramping up for the new album but yeah to have nominations for the middle and um dear hate and mona lisa's that was just like such a shock and i know everyone says that but it really was a shock i wasn't expecting to get a nomination for dear hate or you know a, an elton john rendition that i created um but it's yeah it's really humbling i think the grammys have always looked at things outside of the box and it yeah i'm excited for this year all my friends are nominated too which is cool did when when uh, the middle comes out and it blows up oh, baby. And that opened you up to so many people, right? They probably would have never been able to find you that are now fans of yours because the song is on pop radio. Yeah, I know for sure. Um, and universally, like the world has heard the middle. So I got a lot of fans in regions I had never gotten to visit before, like South America and New Zealand and Australia, places like that, Mexico City. So it was crazy to, to play a live show for an audience that, you know, doesn't even speak English as their primary language and to really react to that song they were singing so loud it was awesome that's gotta be crazy right like you're singing in English they don't speak English but they know the words back in English yeah that's kind of a crazy thing about um you know pop music is that it is so accessible on every level no matter the language I mean you could go to Japan you could go wherever and it, it those people just they 
devour that kind of music. And I remember in South America, I was, I was talking to some journalists and I was like, so in country music, who do you guys love down here? And they were like, well, we don't get a ton of it, but we love um, Shania Twain <laughs> and Dolly Parton and we love Taylor Swift. And I was like, okay, and Carrie Underwood. Like those, it's all women that they, they mentioned, which was cool. Um, so it, I'm trying to like, yeah, definitely open myself up to touring all over. And uh, the middle has helped launch that in a big way. Where do you play that in your set now? The very end. You do? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll always do that, but you know, it being almost a year old, uh, it, it, it's just such a like banger at the end of the set. I usually do like my church and then the middle and it's like the most fun transition. And I mean, like I remember at the iHeart um, Awards, you saw that and you were like, everyone was singing oh, it. It was the first time you had played it, I think, was at the festival. It was. That, like as, a, as your full band. Yeah, it and was you, the first time I played it um, live. It was it was crazy. Everybody was singing the song. The people that came to watch you and the people who were there to watch whomever else, but everyone knows that song. It's crazy. Didn't it come out on the Target commercial last year in the Super Bowl? Yes. Um, no, it wasn't the Super Bowl. It was at the Grammys. They okay. like aired the music video, which was with Target, and then it um, was in the Target campaign for spring. So that was cool. Um, yeah, and to have it nominated for a couple Grammys is really cool because I think the Grammys have always been about like diversity and like collaborations and making these like Grammy moments that are unexpected and that song kind of represents what they're about so it's cool so I was watching your Instagram and you do these things and you did these things um, I think you were maybe overseas and you put headphones on everyone and you let them all listen to was it your whole record or just the new song it was like seven or eight songs from the new record. wow really yeah and so I mean if I'm gonna bring everyone there I'm not just gonna play one song I, I definitely like wanted them to get a good more soul of the album. Are you watching their faces? It's always weird for me when someone goes, here, listen to my music. I'm going to watch you listen to my music. Right. Because I'm like, what Study do I do with you. my face? Yeah. Do I, do I bob up and down? Do I bob? What if I bomb it too much? Yeah. Um, no, I was, I felt like kind of creepy watching their faces. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was so sweet. Like in every uh, crowd has been different and we've only done two, but we did London and then we did Dallas and then we're going to do a couple more. Um, and like London is so polite and they're just really listening and taking in the lyrics and but you can tell that they're into it and then Dallas was like way more rambunctious and um no it, it was cool and you can tell in each region which song really speaks to them and they were different in each city which songs like really lit them up so it's it's interesting how do people get invited to that or how do you pick who gets to come into the house um so I or like wherever you are uh, good question. I like officially started a f my fan club, uh, you know, going into this album two phase and I just had um, everyone like sign up who wanted to sign up. And then we in the region that we were doing the listening event, we just sent out like um, like a not like sweepstakes, but something like that where you sign up. And we had like 30 people um, admitted from that pool and just invited them to like an Airbnb in London and um I, my friend made food for everyone. They made like hot chicken. So it was kind of like Nashville to London. Yeah. And uh, we just did a little silent disco and did like a Q and A afterwards. And it was a really small like London flat. So it felt really intimate, but everyone just got to like talk about the songs. And it was really cool. Cause I am such a, a fan of my fans and I want to give them something special. Cause it has been so long since I've released you know, my own new music, and uh, we've had a blast at these. I can't wait to do a couple more. So a new record, I'm assuming, is going to come this year. Do you know when, or does it depend on how fast the song moves? You don't have to say when. Do you know when? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's a date. Um, you know, I I think that there's so much validity in waiting for a song to, like, reach critical mass, but for me, this really has been about, like, it's been almost three years since I put Hero out. I really just- Wow, um, three years. Well, this June, yeah. So I was like, I can't let it hit the three year mark without putting a new record out. You're like a whole different person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's I've, funny is some people will only now start to get your record. You know, they may buy your record three months ago. Yeah. But I mean, if it came out three, year, three years ago in June, that means you were writing it way before that. Four, five, six, even some of it that long back yeah i mean like drunk girls don't cry has got to be like six or seven six years old so um i'm i'm ready more than anyone to put this new stuff out but 
yeah, I just, I know the date of the album release. It's not very far off um, and a tour and all that fun stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for 2019. And this music is like, I do feel like a different person. I'm still myself in a lot of ways. Like I still am very much uh, a feisty Texan. And then at the same time, I think I've softened up a bit just from being in um, the spotlight for several years and uh, also being married and kind of taking those walls down with the, the material I write. Um, so yeah, I, I do feel different. I, I feel like more of a grown up. And I would say this music is more grown up, but it's still like, it's not taking itself too seriously. Do you have any cool Instagram friends that we'll say famous Instagram friends that you like talk with on Insta stories to send you messages back and forth. If we'd be like, that's totally cool. Um, John Mayer. Yeah. He'll comment on some of your stuff. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, we're not like close, but, um, no, I mean, there are several, you know, people that I've always looked up to as a musician that have taken an interest in what I've done artistically. And that's, super cool <laughs> if you put up a funny answer story they'll be like hey that's funny or something yeah like that. i don't know if it was that but it was like more music based um but yeah him uh i'm trying to think i, I usually only comment when you post things about the office i'll be like love that episode yes yeah um well i recently like deleted instagram and twitter off my phone just until the uh, the single comes out because I just wanted a break. Like I, I didn't want to go into this new phase with any cloudiness. And, you know, I love Instagram and I love talking to fans. But when you are like comparing and comparing yourself to people's highlight reels all the time, it's uh, it get it gets to you. And so I think it's like perfectly healthy to like unplug for a, a, a week or so or however long. And um yeah, I I just it's been nice to like not check it every single hour. When I went to I went to this thing this therapy thing called Onsite and they took my phone. I was like, this is gonna suck because they they were like we have your phone for five days and nothing you can do you don't get a phone. And I was I've like, this is gonna. That. But about mm, two thirds into the first day, you're like, this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Nothing is there. You're not worried about whose bl- emails, Instagram. Right. But then you get it back, you eat it up again. You're like, this is yeah. amazing. I get my phone back. It's the greatest <laughs> day ever of my life. Did you have anxiety getting it back? Like you're like, oh I my didn't God, want it back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open yeah. all these apps up again and it's going to be like m- mayhem. Well, I thought I was going to be way cooler than I was. I was like, I'm going to have so many text messages. People are going to be like, <laughs> where you been? And I, but I was like two. It was like one of those that goes, your bills do. And that was one of them. Oh, so, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not that well, cool. Well, <laughs> we knew you were gone. Yeah, but still, sure. like, not like, everybody did. I didn't say, hey, everybody, I'm going into therapy You wanted camp. to light up. Yeah. yeah. I get it, dude. I, I went skiing last week, and all my friends, um, all my high school friends I was on this ski trip with, they were, like, you know, posting pictures of all of us, like, skiing, and I was just, you know, the one in the living room that wasn't on Instagram all night, and I was like, oh, I kind of miss it. Should I re-download it? And then I was <laughs> like, no, I'm enjoying myself. We're, like, hanging out. I'm learning to do a new thing. Um, so it's been nice, like, very refreshing but I do miss like checking in on my friends and like what they're up to I feel like I I missed a lot of like song releases because that's like how you know things now is Twitter or Instagram like oh uh my friend just released something I should probably go listen to that so you skied for your first time ever yeah Um, how was it it was great we went to Tahoe uh, at Heavenly and it was gorgeous I we skied for like four days and it was you know I'm a beginner so the first day was just like ski school with all the children and um (laughs) it was really fun like I I am 28 and I've never been skiing I've never even seen snow like Texas is just you know it's ice or nothing so I just adored it up there and I did have like one panic attack which I think is like you know allowed for the first week you ski but um no it was awesome I loved it and just like getting off a slope going to the bar and just opera skiing um yeah I had the best time I've never been skiing. I know. Amy I want goes. Bobby Amy's to go. A, Amy's a skier. You should go. I think you would really love it. I'm afraid I'm going to tear all the muscles. And my muscles are not as strong as they used to be. Yeah. Like when I get I sore disagree, now, though. I think I'm injured. You look like you're in great shape. I think I'm in pretty good shape. But man, when I get sore, it's just not the same. Yeah. We had to stretch a lot. It, it, our fall? bodies were wrecked. Yeah. So um, it's like green, blue, and then black diamond slopes. And green's the easiest. And I was on greens all day. And then my friends are like, 
you could totally do a blue slope. <laughs> and this one's super easy too. And I was, I was like, okay, sure. And I'm feeling confident because I hadn't fallen all day. I get on the blue and it is like a vertical slope down. And yeah. I'm like crying into my mask because I'm so scared. And Ryan, you know, God love him. He's trying to be really sweet and like tell me what to do to get down. But that only enrages you more. I, yes. Yeah. I was about to say, did you, now that I know Ryan was there and he's, uh, he's really good at skiing. Yeah. So did y'all fight that one of my husband and I I didn't start skiing till I married him we married 12 years so it was about 12 years ago I started really skiing and one of our worst fights ever is us on the slope almost in this exact yeah. predicament where he's trying to coach me along and I'm so scared and I'm just get away from me yeah, and I'm yeah. crying and screaming I said I can't believe you told me this was easy like I'm never doing this again like just being so dramatic but you're scared you're physically scared and I was like okay I can either take my skis off and walk down this effing mountain <laughs> yes or get the toboggan guy to come get me which would be super shameful at this point or just ski really slowly down and turn and turn and turn and he's like coaching me and being very sweet but at that point i'm just like this is done yeah, like get, away get me, me to yeah. the hot tub and i'm never doing this again but i went the next day it was fine have you seen the the, the tidying up show on netflix yet with the girl who tidied? i've seen the picture i haven't watched it up on the main part of the screen yeah it, yeah you still haven't seen it either huh no not yet Let's do this then. Let's do um, what's your go-to. Are you ready? I'll give you something. You tell me what your go-to is. I love is. when we talk about Netflix. Oh, that's all I do. And I'm afraid people don't watch the stuff that I watch. Do yeah. You, uh, what have you seen? So I just started watching Narcos Mexico. So good. So good. Is it? I've watched all the Narcoses, yes. I haven't watched the first one, but the Narcos Mexico, I was like really interested because I've been to Mexico and I wanted to know more about like the Mexican cartel. Yes. And it's a crazy story. You'll, I don't know how far along you're in, but El Chapo makes an appearance as a young... It, yes, young is Chapo. that the El Chapo? It's the El Chapo. Okay. And I'm so this is before he makes his rise. Five. Yeah. So then he hasn't, he starts off low. Yeah, and he's you're like a driver. Him, like make his way up and then... You've got, well, El Chapo's on Netflix. You need that. It's dubbed over in English. Yeah. Like Spanish. the show El Chapo. She's, she got obsessed with these drugs. Yes. She likes gangs <laughs> and drugs. It's things she would never be involved yeah, in like ever. In, like, I like true can... crime. I get it. Did well, you watch you... The Innocent Man on Netflix? Um, I have gotten like an episode in and then I think I got distracted, but is it it's good? It's so good. Okay. Yeah, you have to get into it. That's it's good. the and it's one only that's six based episodes. off the, the, the guy, the Dean Koontz, or who is it? It's um, um, John Grisham. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's a real. It's his only nonfiction book. Right. And it's yes. in Ada, Oklahoma, where Blake's Blake Shelton's from. And I've been oh, to that wow. little town. There's nothing there and like yeah. two people were murdered and you're it's really good. Yeah, okay. I need to keep going. I've watched Narcos Mexico and then um the one that I'm like I I laugh the hardest. Like last night I was crying. I was it was one of those I got like a, a bug of laughing and couldn't stop. It was uh Friends from College, which is like um the guy from Key and Peel, uh Key is in it and um it's like all these actors and it's just these friends that are like now in their 40s and they are really codependent on each other and they've been friends since college and the humor is just so it's like my style of humor um but yeah i would recommend friends from college have you seen uh the good place do you watch a good place mm -mm. the first two seasons are on netflix it's super funny if you like That's... the office in parks and rec you'll love the okay. good place uh anything else that you watch no, I feel like if she hasn't seen the first Narco, she needs to because Pablo Escobar. You yeah, have, the first one's good. The first one's so good. I kind of burnt out on the second one, but the first one's really good. Yeah. Well, I, I noticed in one of the Narcos Mexico episodes that he like, he's in an episode. Yes. Because, Pablo Escobar is? Well, yeah. yeah the Mexican they, like, cross paths. dude. I don't know where you are in it, but they end up making love a deal together. <laughs> no, it's strictly a marijuana based business at first. And then he gets into cocaine Columbia. and that's when he gets mm. into the, which is Pablo Right. And did I you mean, see Bird Box? Yes, yeah. What, what, did you see it before the hype, during the hype, or kind of after? I guess after because it was the new year. I yeah. watched it. And how'd you feel? Um, okay, I, I was very hooked. I thought it was a little too long. It was like over two hours. It was over two, two hours. hours, yeah. Um, and there's only, I, I loved the beginning because it was really intense and creative. And I liked the ending, but there was only so many scenes of like her in a blindfold falling in the woods that I could uh, take. She's like, boy, boy. Like how many scenes of that? Um, but I really liked it. I liked it too. I, did, I liked it too. Yeah. I did like it too. Okay, we're going to run this down. What's your go-to coffee order? Um, I really like almond milk lattes. Your go-to karaoke song? 
Uh, I love Wannabe, The Spice Girls, or Halo, Beyonce. That's always been my karaoke song. When you go in, do you kill it? And people are like, oh, she must be a singer. Or do you go in and just be goofy? Um, I, I, I mean, Spice Girls, you're kind of goofy, but I remember doing Beyonce and uh, at Santa's Pub like five or six years ago, and that's how I became friends with the Osbournes. <laughs> um, John and TJ, like they were all at Santa's Pub, and I was like, they don't know I, I sing, and so I'm going to do this Halo song. <laughs> and then everyone was like, it was like a record stopping. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's my go-to. Uh, go-to song when you're feeling sad. Um, you say you've had too much. What's that one? Everybody hurts. Everybody that's mine too. Everybody yeah. hurts. It's like the quintessential. Yeah. I nailed it. That's my song. I love <laughs> that's that That's your one. karaoke that's song? My, when I, no, when I'm happy, <laughs> sad, a, karaoke. Well, okay. I did all, I everywhere all I go. Feels. That would be hilarious yeah. if you did that at karaoke. <laughs> uh, pizza topping. Um... I love like anything spicy, probably jalapenos and like pepperoni. One more. How about place to write? What's your go to? Where's your go to place to write? Um, I have a hard time writing at my house, so probably anywhere that's more of like a, a designated writing area. I love like you know publishing houses that are well decorated and vibey. Um, yeah. See, like I have to get out of my room to create because that's I get comfortable. Yeah. So. I, like, I, I would never be able to work from home. No, me neither. I remember, like, I did some online college courses, and I was, I was like, I can't do this. I'm not self-motivated enough to do this. Well, Marin Morris, um, so happy you have a song out, because that means more songs are coming. Yeah. Um, congratulations. You know Thank we're all you. big fans here. Thank you so much. Yeah, look at this. You this guys is, have been so good to me. Girl. Won't you stop me and as soon as you get that record ready, let us know. Come back. You can, well, I will. You can do whatever you want. You can play the whole thing. We'll just go home. You just take over. We'll play do the whole a, thing. All a right. silent disco. Marin Morris, everybody. There she is. And uh, congratulations on your iHeartRadio Award nominations. Thank you. Yeah. That was such a cool thing to hear last week. All right. Well, Amy, anything you want to say before we let her go? No. She's got many things to do. I know. She's very busy. She's very I'd busy. Say not really. I, I have no idea what she's doing. Just... Well, it looks like, I mean, you look very beautiful yeah. for early in the morning. Do you get free Thank clothes? Thank you. The cool people send you free clothes? Um, sometimes. Yeah, that's that's the kind of level I want to be on, where I just get free clothes. Yeah. I got one suit one time. I, I'm all about free stuff, because yeah. I really don't like shopping. Um, I don't like paying for stuff. I don't like about shopping. Like, <laughs> just paying. Just I don't like paying for stuff. Yeah, I'm right. there with you. All right, Maren Morris, we'll let you go. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Right, there she is. It's, it's about